Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Finally. And welcome to the last podcast of this last test of, well, I guess the first test of the idea three. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the lab stuff that goes with it and some of the calculations and stoichiometry and the like. So there is a gas, there's a lab where we're going to collect a gas over water. Okay. So this could very well be a stoichiometry lab where you get a percent yield. So I'm going to run down a couple of different things that could happen. Okay. The reaction happens in a test tube and forms a gas. So this is obviously not a test tube, but if I have Mg plus HCl yields MgCl2 plus hydrogen gas. Okay. Hydrogens are going to be gas. This is going to be aqueous. This is going to be aqueous. An aqueous remember just looks like a water, like a water. I'm sorry, it looks like a liquid. Um, so a gas is produced, and this starts out in full in the tip top, tippity tip, 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 tip top. Okay. So the way you do that is you fill it up with water, you stick it in this trough and invert it, and it doesn't sink very much. Okay. And then this produces gas, and that gas displaces the water and pushes it out. Okay. So um, the graduated cylinder starts full of water, which is what I said, and the gas pushes the water out. And we're going to find the moles using PV equals NRT. So on this, we've got to be able to figure out um, each one of these variables. Okay, we're going to calculate moles, but that's it. Okay, so we have to equalize these water levels. So um, the reason why you do this is to make sure that your pressure is equal. Okay, that means the pressure will be the same inside as outside if you do that. Okay, so um, side note on that, water level. Here's my inverted test tube water levels up here on this one. Right. So what that means is on here, this is pushing harder. And this is weaker. So what that means is the pressure outside is greater than the pressure inside. That's a greater than symbol. I don't know why it might look so bad. Okay. And then if I do the same thing, but my, uh oh, water level here, in this case, my pressure outside is small. Um, but if it lines up like this, this means the pressure inside, I'm sorry, if it lines up like this, that means the pressure in equals the pressure out. And a regular old barometer would, I can measure the pressure outside, and that equals my pressure inside, which equals my P. Okay. Volume of the gas. Oh, well, but then we have a, another tricky, tricky, tricky thing. Don't forget to subtract the vapor pressure of water and use Dalton's law. Okay. So we talk about the pressure inside equals the pressure outside. You will be given a vapor pressure of water. So the pressure inside equals the pressure outside, and the pressure inside would equal the pressure of H2, H2, plus the pressure of H2O. H2O and all liquids always evaporate just a touch, okay? And that has to be added in there because otherwise your hydrogen will be falsely hot. Um, you wait until the temperature is the same as the room. Um, you just tend to not mention that, but that gives you the temperature. Um, so we've got P, we've got V we can read, we've got temperature right here, R is a constant, and then we can solve for N, which is the number of moles. So people forget to subtract the vapor pressure here. People forget to equalize the water levels, and that's it. Okay. So um, I give you some data, and we'll run through that. And there's problems like that we're going to do. Vapor pressure. All gases evaporate some. Hey, remember how we talked about water in the lab? Weaker intermolecular forces evaporate more. Vapor pressure is the force of evaporated gas back down on the liquid. Okay. So this is kind of hard to read, but this would be a strong... Whoa, see how that S disappeared? Woo, woo, strong intermolecular force 
must be the weakest. Okay. So a weak force, remember, is going to give you a lot of gases. And this would be the highest, oops, there's a high vapor pressure. And this would be a low vapor pressure. Hey, look, there's an S. See that strong one? That was it. That's weird. Collecting gas over water needs to subtract the vapor pressure of water. Most forgotten thing of on AP exam. The will be given means the vapor pressure of water will be given. You don't have to memorize it. It's not a number. All right. Mole fraction. This is another one of those most missed ones that's really not bad at all. Okay. It's the fraction of one substance to the entire mixture in moles. A sample of air has three moles of N2, 0.85 moles of O2, and 0.05 moles of CO2. What is the mole fraction of O2? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take oxygen, right? So mole fraction of oxygen equals moles of oxygen over moles total. My moles of oxygen is 0.85. And the moles total is 3 plus 0.85 plus 0.05, which is 3.9. I have to admit, my calculator has run away from me, so I'm going to ask Siri. I hope she's right. What is 0.85 divided by 3.90? And that is 0.218. Now, mole fraction has no units, okay? It is unitless. Okay. Now, mole fractions also are not fractions. They're always given as decimals with the correct number of sig figs. Okay, so this one, however, has two sig figs, so I should say, right, so three sig figs, two sig figs, two sig figs, then around to the fewest, as always, 0.22 is the mole fraction of O2. And the symbol for mole fraction is chi, the Greek letter chi. All right. If you ever wanted to find the partial pressure of something, you can take the mole fraction of the gas times the total pressure. So if I told you the total pressure um, um, in a tank is 1.83 atmospheres and helium um, has a mole fraction of 0.88 Eight. Find the partial pressure and all you do is you take partial pressure, the pressure of helium equals the pressure total times the mole fraction. I guess I put it in the other order. I'll put it, I'll put it in the order I give. So my mole fraction is 0.888. So 0.888 times 1.83. So I'm doing it, plugging it in. Put it in my calculator or ask Siri. What is 0 0.888 times 1.83? That's 1.63 atmospheres. Okay. Good. Last part. Well, almost last part. Temperature is average kinetic energy. We talked about this a little bit before. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And then I want to emphasize that more massive would be slower. Neon, molar mass is 20, is slower than helium, molar mass of 4, as it has less mass. Okay? And that's mass per particle. This comes from... Um, Molar mass on periodic table. Okay. All right. Gas stoichiometry. So gas stoichiometry is basically just plain old regular stoichiometry, except for you got to throw a PV equals nRT on one side or the other. So let's take a looky looky. Tungsten, a metal that's used in light bulb filaments, is produced industrially by the following reaction of tungsten oxide with hydrogen. This is before we had our super high efficiency light bulbs. Wo3 solid 
plus 3H2 gas yields wu solid plus H2O liquid. How many liters of hydrogen at 35 degrees Celsius and 0 0.980 atmospheres are needed to react completely with 875 grams of tungsten oxide? So the first thing I have to do is figure out which one of these is tungsten oxide. Okay, not water. Tungsten, not tungsten oxide. Hydrogen, that's WO3. Okay, so I'm going to start with 875 grams of WO3. Okay, and I'm going to convert WO3 into hydrogen. And I'm going to do it in moles. Okay, once I get moles, then I'm going to PV equals NRT it. So here we go. Same starting block. Grams of WO3, one mole, WO3, and then WO is tungsten, it's number 74, so 183.84 plus 48 equals 0.84, 11, 13, 133.84. Now I'm going to get rid of moles of WO3 and convert it into moles of hydrogen. Moles over moles use coefficients. So one WO3 will give me three hydrogens. One WO3 will give me three hydrogens. And this will give me moles of hydrogen. Okay? Which isn't what I'm looking for. I admit that. I'm looking for liters of hydrogen. But first I'm going to get moles and then I'm going to do, um, then I'm going to do PV equals NRT. So, let's see again, sadly, I'm calculator less. 875 divided by 131.84 times 3. And I get 19, wow, that's a huge number, 19.91 moles of hydrogen. 875 divided by 131.84 times 3, yep. So that's right. Um, and now what I'm going to do to find out the liters, I'm going to do... PV equals NRT. Remember, that's N. Okay? So the pressure is up here, and it's 0 0.980. Remember how our units matter when we use R? So we've got to have our units in atmospheres. Woohoo! Our bottle, oh, 35. Ugh! The nerve of 35. So 35 plus 273 will be 308. Okay? Um, how many liters? So I'm going to solve for liters. Number of moles is 19.91. It doesn't matter if you round that or not yet. You probably shouldn't. 0 0.0821. Then my temperature is not 35, it's 308. So then V is going to be 19.91 times 0 0.0821 times 308 over 0 0.980. And my answer is going to come out to be in liters. Because R, number R, is in liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. So that means atmospheres got that unit, Kelvin got that unit, moles got that unit, liters or what? Yeah. So let's see if Siri can uh, do the math on this. What is 19.91 times 0 0.821 times 308 divided by 0 0.980? Ooh, 19.91 times. Oh, man, it didn't do it right. So I checked the thing. It says 0.821 instead of 0 0.0821. I'll try it again. What is 19.91 times 0 0.0821 times 308 divided by 0 0.980? 19.91, 0 0.0821 times 308 divided by 0.98. There we go. And I get 514 liters to 368. Okay, and there we go. That's it. So notice you do the stoic like you did before, just get it in moles, and then Tupnerd it. Okay, we'll use that formula a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So we're going to do this math a bunch, and we're going to enjoy the heck out of it. I'm looking at it's the last test before the first half of uh, Big Idea 3. And I will talk to you in class. Toodles.